of it being a feast, a place of rest, where um, we wouldn't be striving to do our own thing or to make this thing work. <clears throat> so the road is now turning. It prepared to move on to a broad place. Oh, glory to God. And so, <clears throat> what is this word broad? What does it mean, actually? It means, we all understand, it means large across, wide, extensive, clear, vast, ample. And then there's another word that it means. It means not limited. Do you like that? Not limited. What kind of realm have we been in? An in-heart realm. The earnest only <laughs> of our inheritance. Oh, many times I have prayed for a person, I'm sure you have too, I thought, oh, Father, this word of wisdom or this word of knowledge is not sufficient. I just need more. And he says, but there is more. There is a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of knowledge. In Isaiah 11, it speaks of the sevenfold uh, spirit of God, where uh, the, oh, okay, <laughs> we'll just touch that, just touch that briefly. Isaiah 11, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, so it sounds like, if we're not judging by our eyes and our ears, it sounds like we have come in to Christ. We're judging by his eyes, by his heart, by his ears. <laughs> that is what's going to be in the broad place. It's not just any longer, um, as the gifts are, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. Compare the word of something to the spirit of that thing. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge compared to a word. And this is um, the operation of the fullness that we can look forward to. And some have said to me, well, I used to operate in the gifts of the Spirit and just like they have evaporated, I don't know where they went. And that's okay. Don't worry about it. He could be preparing you for the um, fullness of the Spirit. It's quite all right. You keep your heart right before God, he'll give you all that you have need of. Glory to God. <clears throat> and so, this realm of the broad place that he has for us is a place of no limitations. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that mighty? Oh, God. And I forgot to tell you what 100 means. It's 100 acres. 100 means liberty. Promises obtained, the testimony of Jesus. And so there's a hundred acres in this place and the Lord is saying it speaks of promises obtained. Many were the promises unto the children of Israel that they <clears throat> only received in an outward form. And those promises are to us today, as Brother said, in a heavenly form, in a spiritual form, that they have come down from that heavenly place that we can experience them. Like when we were born again, it was a heavenly experience that came down upon us. And then at Feast of Passover, it was again a heavenly experience uh, fulfillment that we received. And there is the Feast of Tabernacles that's going to be a feast of fullness. And that is why, my brethren, the wind is blowing so hard and other things other manifestations to bring his people to an end of self. It's not that we're just going to have a great time, although they have a great time, that's okay. It's fringe benefits, because I, as I see it, the main thing is that he's got a hold of your life, and he's going to do a work in your heart, um, not just so that you can have a great time, but so that he can do a great work in you and take you around the bend not just continue on uh, to stay in that place where it's cramped and, and you're, you, there's hardly any place to, to move anymore. You're in that straightness. He's going to take you to that place. It's a broad place. There's all kinds of place uh, of room to move. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Kurumoti eyo subuluba tarandai. Hallelujah. A place without limitation. And there you will find pure air. Um, the first night that Bill and I stayed in that house, um, we felt like we were drugged. We just could hardly wake up because we, uh, we had the window wide open. The air was so pure it was, the only word I could think of was intoxicating. It was simply intoxicating. And the realm of that spirit shall be um, so pure it'll just be quickening and life-giving. You'll feel, wow, I feel so much better than I felt before. And the quietness and the peace in that realm of spirit uh, one brother phoned back after he'd stayed a few nights with us. He said, you know, it's so quiet out there, you can almost hear your hair grow. <laughs> but in the spirit, he's bringing us to a realm of peace and rest and quietness. And I can tell as I go about, if I start to feel the billows rolling, uh-oh, well, uh I'm losing my peace and my rest. And Bill and I will sit down before the Lord and um, love him and wait before him until all comes to quietness again. All comes to peace. Because this is the place he's bringing us into. And it isn't suddenly that, oh great, one day we wake up, zam, we are there. We have the fullness of the Spirit, we have arrived. No, it is a season of God's dealings. I would say about a year and a half, possibly two years ago, the Lord kept impressing upon my heart. I'd hear it in my heart as I'd be working around. It's um, upper room time. Oh, upper room time? What do you mean by that, Lord? I pondered it in my heart. And I, was, I understood that he meant it's the season of waiting upon the Lord. There were those who were called aside. Remember, there were 500 who saw the Lord go up. But there are only 120 who waited before him in the upper room. So it's upper room time once again. He says, I'm having you draw aside and wait upon me. You don't know what you're waiting for, but I want you to get your spirit quiet and your own uh, agendas out of the way and um, listen for what I'm going to do because there's going to be a, um, a certain day that I'm bringing you into this, but it's going to be a gradual working all in this season of the upper room. He is preparing the heart. Glory to God. And it's going to come um, line upon line, precept upon precept, as he takes away that which is of self and imparts that which is of himself. Until one day, um, you won't exactly know which is the Lord and which is you, because you've become so bonded. Um, you'll know that you're walking in the mind of Christ, Sometimes now, um, I find the Lord interrupting me. This never, ever happened before. I will be thinking something, and suddenly I'll hear the Lord say, No, it's thus and so, or that's it is. I thought, wow, how can you do that? But it was just like I felt, here is my mind, my carnal, natural mind, and here's the mind of the Spirit. And he says, you have the mind of the Spirit. If you have the spirit, his mind is part of himself. You have the mind of Christ. But our own mind has been so strong that we've operated from our own mind. But his mind is, as it were, overshadowing us. And as we get more and more yielded to him, he overshadows more and more closely until we'll just be operating from his and we'll hardly need ours except for uh, doing the menial things uh, that the Gibeonites usually do, the, the bringing the... We're chopping the wood and hauling the water and doing the cooking. We'll use our minds for that. But I would find, hear the Holy Spirit interrupt me and, and speak to me something that um, he wanted me to know at that given time. And so we're going to, our mind is going to, his mind is going to melt right into ours where we won't know that difference. That we will just know as long as this tremendous peace is there that God is flowing. And when we need to make a decision or something, we'll just go by that rise and fall of the Spirit. We don't have to go and, and pray hard and, and wait to see what he wants to say about this leading. If we've come into his rest, then we can go by the rise and the fall of the Spirit. If the Spirit goes, 
but don't do it. And if the spirit rises up with joy, hey, follow the river, follow the flow. Glory to God. And so there is a pure air, and there was pure water on this place, a very deep well, very hard water, but very deep and very pure in this realm of the spirit. Everyone around us uh, pretty well is um, on town water that's fluoridated and all those good things they do, chlorinated and what have you, but this has been untouched by man, the water that God gives us. So the Lord kind of set this whole place up to speak, to speak. Is it speaking to you? Good. Now, it definitely is on a higher elevation than when we were half up the hill. It's on a much higher elevation. We're at, actually at the base of a mountain called Blue Nose Mountain. And um, it's perhaps not as warm there, but it's nice and cool in the hot summers. We enjoy that. So we are going to a higher elevation in the spirit. And I'll tell you where that elevation is. It's the most holy place where we meet him face to face. I thought we couldn't see God face to face and live. We would die if we see him face to face. Well, brethren, that's the name of the king. We've been dying all this time so that we can see him face to face and live because we're no longer um, separate from him or something other. We are him. We're of his substance of his nature, so um, we can see his face and live. And I'm <clears throat> thinking of one time I was on the mission field, and um, I was working really hard. We had, we had to grow big gardens to provide our needs because uh, we didn't have anybody, any group supporting us, so we grew large gardens, and we had to work hard weeding them in the summertime. And this day we were having a little rest in the afternoon, there was an Eskimo girl living with us and we were praying and we were pleading with the Lord we were saying oh God if we could just see you Jesus just once if you just appear to us and show yourself to us if we could just see you everything would be so easy after that we would gladly weed those old carrots and potatoes and, and we wouldn't ever complain or think it's hard if we could just see your face once you know so we prayed really hard to see the Lord <laughs> And the Lord began to speak to us. And he said, yes, I appear from time to time in a visible form unto my children, usually in times of crisis. And he said, perhaps that's the only time they are aware of my presence all their life. And that one seeing has to last them the rest of their life. But he said, I come to you in a far greater dimension when I come to you by my spirit, because here I am with you always. And you have to learn to see me with the eyes of the spirit and not be looking for some bodily representation of me as if that would satisfy you for the rest of your life. No, it won't. It would satisfy you for just such a short time. Learn to know me by the spirit. And now I know him by the Spirit. And when I come to pray, um, I just contemplate the beauty of his Spirit because my eye sees him <laughs> in a way that I couldn't when I was in that immature place in God. And so <clears throat> we found there, uh, the Lord said, look for, in this realm, look for fruitfulness because... Um, in the wilderness, we have been quite barren and unfruitful. And any land that we walked on, we didn't possess any of it. We just walked on it, but we didn't possess one speck of land. But in this new realm, whatever place you tread on, it's yours. You can possess it. And so he said, uh, look for fruitfulness. Well, in this 100 acres of trees, I think there are only two um, fruit trees. But nearby, at our landlord's place, they have a little orchard and they would come to my door last uh, last year and this year with boxes full of fruit pears plums apples you name it cherries 
thought, oh my word, this is wonderful. I didn't have to go out and buy anything. And the Lord said, in this realm, watch for fruitfulness, because fruitfulness will be coming forth. And also he said something else that blessed my heart. He said, in this new realm of my spirit, you will find loving acceptance. I thought, wow, Lord, that means a lot to us. Because if you have been walking in a place that is a little different from the established church, and they can't understand you, one thing you have not had is loving acceptance, right? No, you've had misunderstandings and, oh, they're off the wall and watch out for them. And I won't go into that. <laughs> but it has been the opposite to loving acceptance. And so you had to just say, Father, um, please keep me in a right spirit. I remember one time years ago, uh, the Lord was giving a revival among the um, Mennonite people in Canada, and um, we were being used there, and uh, some groups were saying oh, unkind things about us and untrue things, and I was getting a bit uptight about that because it was so unjust and uncalled for. And finally the Lord dealt with my heart one day, and he said, they are as Moses, who are just having a view of the land. He can look at it, but he's going to die. He can't possess it. But he said, I've called you to be in the Joshua company that's going in and possessing the land. But I want you to know, if you keep um, a bitter spirit, you'll not enter the land either. You'll also be as Moses and you'll die in the wilderness. Whoa, I felt like Father had taken me to the woodshed and spanked me. And I learned something that um, um, even though we've not had up to this time perhaps loving acceptance, we still have to give uh, loving acceptance to those who don't understand. Because somewhere along the line, the breath of God could move upon them and they'll come and they'll say, um, tell me of your God. Tell me of, of where you are. And just the very love that God is in working in us is becoming such a, an attractive drawing factor. Sometimes when Bill and I have had a, a precious time with the Lord, we'll go shopping and maybe stop for coffee or something. And we've had people in the next booth, they're kind of leaning over to us wanting to talk. Some of us give us their address. Will you come and see us? And they're perfect strangers. And we just know it isn't us. We just know that... Um, but the love of God is reaching out and emanating from us. We're not going to have to, brethren, go up to a man and, like my husband says, collar them and shake them by the neck and tell them you've got to know Jesus. We don't have to. They'll come up and they'll want to know um, what makes you different. Why do I feel so good about, around you, so comfortable with you? Because they'll feel the presence of God. And this about um, the peace and quietness of this realm is the Sabbath. It's the Sabbath. It's the seventh day rest. And this is what he had. We have walked through six days or 6,000 years of men's striving, of men's ways. And now the Lord says, come to rest. Cease from your own ways and come into mine. Let my spirit move and lead you. And while I was in the mission field, the Lord taught me about his rest, which is too long to go into. But it was so precious. So I understand that in this place, there's fruitfulness, there's loving acceptance. It's a virgin land, a virgin church. Um, God is going to, to plant his pleasant plants there. And pure water of life and a higher elevation and take the bend in the road and don't be frightened, be very courage, be very strong, and have good courage to go up and take the land. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I just feel so good and so excited about telling you about this. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. And uh, <clears throat> we certainly have had loving acceptance from our <coughs> landlord and, and his wife. It's just been a sign to us that this is going to come and just to come here among you, um, Ada and Phil didn't know us from a hole in the ground. And um, the people who recommended us didn't know us at all either. And yet, they, <laughs> they have received us with loving acceptance. 
<laughs> the Lord told us um, during that time of the dealing of the broad face, he said, I've hidden you away. But when I bring you out from your hiding place, you'll find loving acceptance. I just happened to notice that when I was reading about this this morning. I thought, wow, Lord, you did that. Yes, I could say we have found loving acceptance. And you all shall find that also when you come into his rest and come into this broad place. So don't be afraid of uh, the bend in the road and going up higher because it's wonderful. And don't stop at any lesser realm, any lesser moving. Just say, Father, um, I'll take whatever moving you do upon my heart, but I keep my eyes upon you. It's the holiest of all. It's a face-to-face -face encounter, that divine exchange that I give you all of myself and you give me all of you. And again, remember I told you about the Lord had been teaching his people for the last 2,000 years what it was like to have Christ in you. Remember I said that he showed me my husband and I in his arms, in his embrace, held to a, close to his bosom. He said, this is how what I've taught my people, Christ in you, the Holy Spirit taught them all this church age. But he said, now I'm ready to teach you something further. And I saw us melt into his heart. He said, now it shall be you in Christ. And when we were in his heart, we were looking out from his eyes, seeing things as he saw them, uh, knowing his heart about a matter. And the things that the Lord has revealed his heart about, I thought, wow, Lord, I had no idea you thought that way about this. That's so completely contrary and opposite to the way my mind would think about something. It's just so much higher. And so this is what it's about. He's bringing us into himself. And when he brings us into himself, then shall we be a blessing to all creation. Then shall we be able to really minister life to them. Glory to God. I thank you for your attention. Oh, Father, I ask you to take these feeble words that I've spoken this morning, Lord, and blow upon them and move them in each heart, Lord. Just cause them to move and move and move in that heart. Bring it back to them from time to time. Make it real to them. Clarify it. Establish it. Write it upon the fleshy tables of their hearts. And cause them to take courage, to be strong and have a good courage, Lord, to go up and take the land. Father, oh, I love these people. I feel your love for them, Father. And you're drawing upon them. Glory to God. I thank you for this, Lord, because I know it's from you that you have purposed that they shall come to this bend in the road and come up higher to that broad place of no limitation. Glory to Jesus. Bless your hearts. <laughs> and um, for those of you who'd like a copy of this that I've spoken to this morning, we brought some a broad place and placed them over there. If you want to take a copy and look it over again, you're most welcome. <laughs>